My name is Thorsten Orgard. I'm a Danish photographer. I travel the world taking photographs and teaching photography. Today I will talk about the joy of photography. I will talk about getting a real camera and how to use it. Below the video here, there is a link to free downloads. There's actually several downloads because I'm celebrating a new season of Magic of Light television. One download is Lightroom and Capture One presets and styles. It's normally $48 and it's a handful of the styles and presets that I use to make black and white and color photos with my Leica cameras, but essentially they can be used by, with any camera profiles or any camera brand. You just have to put in your email and the code and they're free, you save $48, either for Lightroom or Capture One or grab both of them, then you save $96. Also, uh, my classic book, The Emotional Impact of Photography, is $38. Today it's free, you put in the code and email, and that's a book I wrote about some of the iconic and classic photographs and the photographs who took them, how they took them and the story behind those people and their philosophy, and also write why I photograph and how I photograph. And as a new extra bonus, my best-selling book, a little book on photography, you can get that for free today also, put in your name and code. I think that one is normally $48. Today it is free, just put in your name and email, and that is all below the video. You can pause the video and do it now so you don't forget it, but else any time later, you can also do it. Today I have a lot of cameras on the table here. <laughs> Let's just narrow it down very simply. Uh, I have taken photos for many years and uh, this camera sort of is the one that got me into digital photography in 2009. My experience with all the digital cameras here is that they basically all take pictures. Um, so let me just clean out the table a little bit so we can get to the essence of what I want to talk about. The camera that got me into uh, digital photography uh, for real was uh, this camera, which I have done a long video. Uh, this is one of the most amazing camera concepts. Uh, well, it's a Leica and it's a so-called SLR, which means single lens reflex, and it's a film camera. But then Leica made a digital back here together with Imacon and Kodak, uh, and that was back in 2004, 2006. Uh, so this is a 10 megapixel back, and it's really, really a beautiful sensor. Uh, Kodak, of course, makes great sensors. And one of the things, like I said, when they made the first digital cameras was that we want to emu emu emulate <laughs> uh, the film look because that's the last or most recent or basically the only standard for how should colors look is Kodachrome. So that's why they work with Kodak and then they also work with Imacron in Copenhagen who at that time produced scanners, the world's best scanners. So they really knew how to make, you could say, digital signals uh, coming in via optics, make them into uh, digital pictures on a screen and later on a print. So this, you could say, the world's best optics, uh, no-nonsense cameras, and then Kodak and Imicron, they made this digital back, and that was basically back then what made me go from slide film, which was the standard then, to uh, digital, because this was the first camera where I could get the same look with digital as I could with uh, slide film. Um, <clears throat> then what happened was that Leica, based on this sensor, they made the first Leica M camera with digital sensor. Until then, I'll show you here, until then all Leica M cameras were film cameras, like this one, which is beautiful and classic in so many ways. You could say this camera was invented in 1925. And despite there has been different models and so on, this is the M4, so that's number, it should be number four in, in, in the row, but it's not exactly, but this one is the 1960s camera, and this is a film camera, and you can say it looks like these ones and the other ones. But like I made the like an M8 in uh, 2006, and um, that was the first 
digital like a M. Uh, it wasn't full frame. This one is not full frame either. This is a crop sensor. Uh, so that means that the lens I used a lot on this camera back then was 80mm 1.4. Uh, so that one was cropped, so suddenly it was 105. It just means I had to move further away. Uh, so when Leica put in a digital sensor on the M, that was really uh, world news. The real revolution of digital Leicas was in 2009 when Leica made the Leica R9. This is the first Leica uh, rangefinder and first Leica with a full frame sensor. Full frame means, well, full frame is kind of the standard for, uh, you could say, all photography. That is what's called 24 times 36 millimeters. So when you have a camera like this, the film that you would put in this one, the negative, the negative is 24 times 36 millimeters, and that has later been known as full frame in digital. And this Leica M9 that came out in 2009 is the first camera from Leica with a full frame sensor. And it's a CCD sensor, which at that time was uh, still one of the two standards. The other one was CMOS that Canon and so on would use, but Leica worked chose the CCD. Uh, again, the idea was to have uh, a sensor with a look as close to Kodachrome as possible. And that was uh, this sensor. The Leica M9 changed everything. Uh, and for me personally, and you could say one of the reasons why I can still talk about this it came out 2009, it's a vintage digital camera. It's still a camera that I enjoy to use. Uh, and if we go back to 2009, when the camera came out and I got it uh, in a few days after it was released, I had it as um, a cool camera, a kind of, I wouldn't say toy, but it was just like a fun camera to take with me. So I would go out and I'll photograph with uh, the big camera here on a monoport or handheld on a tripod and I would do portraits, whatever, around the world. Um, and then I would take some photos with this and I kind of used always to have two cameras to just have one backup. Uh, so I started using the Leica M9 as my backup because, uh, I don't know, I just, I liked it and you could say, there's one thing you can test if Leica is for you or Leica M is for you, is you go into a camera store and you ask to just hold a Leica for a few minutes and then you go home. If you wake up the next day and the only thing or the first thing you think about is this wonderful feeling of holding a Leica uh, or you just can't stop thinking about it, then there is basically no way back. So I had a little bit of that. I just wanted this camera, I needed this camera, but I don't, didn't really need it. But I started using it alongside the other camera and you could say the more professional, the big camera. And what happened was that, uh, well, one thing was it was fun, but also what I realized was when I sent a batch of photographs to a magazine or to a client, often they would pick uh, the pictures that were taken with this one. And I would also start picking those photos. So it's almost like I had a better hit rate with this. And I wondered about that, of course, for a while, how come this little camera uh, takes better photos. It's not that it actually took better photos. What happened was that uh, when you take a camera like this, you're very precise and you're focused and it's almost like it isn't a tripod or even if you, you handheld it, it's like this is what I'm doing and I'm very making a very precise framing and everything and exposure and blah blah and it's going to be uh, brilliant. Then you take the M9 and it's kind of like a little bit uh, sloppy, I mean, it's not as well defined what the final picture is going to be. You have a vision in your head, or I have a vision in my head, this is what I want to do, and this might be what is happening. But I don't actually have the same control through this viewfinder as I have on this camera. And it's a portable camera, so it's very easy to jump up on a chair and you can say, oh, this could be fun to do this, and it could be fun to do this. Um, and of course, I say now, when I look back, of course, that gives more lively pictures, gives more emotional impact, more communication, and more in the case where you do portraits and reportages, gives more of the personality of, uh, and the atmosphere of the scene than walking around with a clunky camera and almost have it on a tripod and try to arrange everything. So 
that was the thing that also made me decide I'll actually just use the M. Why would I travel? I had, had like a big Pelican case, a big trolley. Um, I would drag uh, with me on the airplanes and shit. And uh, filled with lenses and backup cameras and suddenly I could just take a Leica M9 and a 50mm. Believe it or not, the Leica M9 is still very relevant uh, today, so many years after it came out. It's 80 megapixels, it's a CCD sensor, it has a beautiful look uh, and it's a very quirky camera to use. You could say it kind of had a feel and almost a sound like a film camera. Listen to this when it takes a picture. That's the sound of it. It's not like a click, it's almost like you can hear the film rewind. Of course it doesn't, but that's kind of the sound of it. Just listen to it again. So, this camera is one, I have a couple of them and I've taken, uh, I think, more than 300,000 pictures on those two cameras together and they're still going strong. And I like to take them out now and then and it almost films like, it feels like a film camera. Uh, and this one, believe it or not, I've done a whole masterclass video on this one. So uh, we filmed in New York a few days uh, where I walked around and did street photography portraits. Uh, I went into Central Park, I went into uh, cathedrals and stuff uh, and did street portraits, what have you, uh, with the Leica M9 and some beautiful photos uh, in the park. Uh, I even had fun. Uh, photographing with the dogs in Madison Square uh, dog park um, and at the same time as we did this one we also recorded uh, a street photography masterclass. Uh, that masterclass, both of them, I made a link below the video where you can get the Leica M9 masterclass where I go through the menu, the setup, the history of the camera and any detail you can think of with it and how to use it, how to focus it and so on. Uh, there's a link below the video to the page where you can get that one. And I made uh, a couple of bundles. One of them is the street photography class that uh, I made at the same time I did this one. So if you're into street photography, you get the M9 uh, class and you get the street photography class. Uh, so that's like an over, overwhelming amount of like M9, but it's, you could say, in a way applicable to any photography. Um, and it's just uh, a very lovely camera and you can say either you have one and you haven't used it, get the masterclass, get into it again, or maybe you're thinking about getting like an M9 and I'll get back to that. I've also done other masterclasses and uh, you could say one of the more recent ones is like an M10, this is like an M10R. So I've done a masterclass on the M10 uh, in a similar manner, how to focus it, how to set up the menu of this camera and everything. Um, and also I'm getting rid of the, some of the cameras here now, you can see. And I've done it here on the Leica M11, uh, which is kind of like a special camera in many ways. Uh, and maybe it takes some extra uh, schooling or care to get this camera to behave. Uh, at its best and optimum, uh, the Leica M11. And also um, the Leica Q3 here is a class I've done, and of course I've done the Leica Q and Leica Q2 previously also, how to set up the camera, how to use it, uh, what's special about this camera, um, and how to edit the photos, and even how to make black and white photos with this camera, which I'm sure is gonna be a monochrome model at some point, um, but of course, uh, you can also use this one for black and white. Uh, also the Leica M240, of course, I made a class on. Uh, and also, actually, on the Leica uh, SL2 and the upcoming SL3, I have uh, video classes on. And they kind of all go through uh, the same thing, my master classes, and that is how to use the cameras for different things, how to get the colors right, how to get the exposure right, how to edit the photos, how to make black and white photos from them, uh, how to travel with the cameras, how to set up the menu. And all cameras have special things that you have to do. Uh, you could say one of the things with the Leica like like M11 here is that uh, you could say the exposure is, uh, you could say the exposure is not correct. So you have to set the camera basically to minus two thirds of a stop at all times. You also have to deal in a special way with colors. 
that's all in the video class and it's not there's links to all of it down here. It's not that you have to buy a video class and do that. That's also on my website. There's free articles where I go through uh, a lot of the same things uh, for free. So you can just go read through it uh, as you sit with the camera and as you want to learn more about it. The Leica M9, believe it or not, um, I said I've taken more than 300,000 pictures with uh, this camera and the sister camera of it. I have two M9s uh, and I've written 20 pages <laughs> review on my website over the years. Uh, so since I got the camera from the first day I've been writing how to deal with this camera with SD card to get uh, different errors that could be with it, how to work with the buffer. There's a buffer in the camera so when you're taking free pictures quickly then you have to wait to, for the buffer to clean out, clear out and so on. Uh, lots of things and of course what lenses to use, uh, how to focus the lenses on. So this article goes over this and I basically travel all over the world, uh, Japan, Paris, uh, New York, Istanbul. Sydney, anywhere. This camera has been all over the place. I've taken pictures and have lots of experience that I just share on my website. So you can always go there and look uh, on the M9. Uh, it's totally free. Leica M9 2009, the first full frame Leica uh, rangefinder camera. And then came uh, when this camera came out, you could say the people that that got this camera uh, and a lot of the people that I had in my workshops that came with this camera, that were super enthusiastic because they used to have a Leica film camera or a real camera of some kind, a Nikon or something. And by real camera, I mean something where it has manual focus, it has a uh, shutter speed button here and you would put in a film with a certain ISO and then when you're done with that film you could change to another ISO or another film. Um, and you have an aperture ring here. So that's kind of like this is a real camera. It only has very few controls as a camera should have because the controls of the camera is just to control the light. So a lot of people have used film cameras in the past, real cameras. Uh, and then there was a period where Leica didn't have any digital cameras but kind of like everybody knew that it had to get into digital, sort of. Uh, so people would have to have whatever camera was available of digital cameras with, with weird shapes and you know there wasn't really real cameras, it wasn't like that great for us. They were very sort of sharp and something uh, and amazing in some way but it wasn't really the feeling of photography that you used to know when you used a film camera. So suddenly Leica came out with a full frame real camera <laughs> and what is, what is that? Well that is a camera that, that works in a way so when, when you pick this up you actually feel it's a film camera but it is a digital camera. It has a sensor, it has an SD card in here, it has a screen uh, but everything else is just like it used to be and how it should be. And photography basically is very simple. Uh, that it, it, a camera is basically a dark box where light doesn't come in and when the light comes in, when you press the shutter release, you control how much light comes in and that's how you get the correct exposure. That's the simplicity of it. Any camera you get, Sony, Fuji, whatever, Hasselblad, if it has more buttons than light controls, which is shutter speed, ISO and aperture, those three controls, if it has any more than that, it's basically just BS. You don't need that. So a lot of that is hype, so that is the beauty and the simplicity of the Leica M9 uh, and you can say any real camera. One of the things that happened when people saw the Leica M9 and they used this is uh, wouldn't it be wonderful if it was just black and white because Everybody knows photography is just black and white. We used to shoot black and white film. Why would we have a color? Sensor couldn't be fun to do just black and white and just pretend it's a film camera like the old days. Uh, so some people said that. Also some people said, uh, can we just remove the screen? Can we make it like a film camera? Uh, not just black and white, but also let's just make a back here 
uh, with no screen. We don't need a screen. It just we, it's just like film camera. It's just a sense and stuff. So uh, one thing happened was that Leica actually in 2012 they made the first Leica M monochrome, and monochrome has almost become a tradition now. Uh, that any model of any camera that Leica makes, they make also a monochrome, and there's other brands, Pentax and so on, and Phase One that have also made monochrome cameras. And a monochrome camera is basically just uh, same camera, actually even the same sensor, but just the Bayer filter is removed. The Bayer filter is the one that separates the colors. So when you remove the Bayer filters, you basically just see light. You don't see colors. And that's what you see in a monochrome camera. And the fact that you remove the Bayer filter also kind of 4x the details because now you don't have to deal with red, green, and blue. Uh, you just have to deal with how much light is there. And that means you can use all the sensor power to just register light and not have to deal with separating the open color. So this is the monochrome, uh, the first, you could say the Ur <laughs> monochrome. And let's put that away. Different story. And like I have sense of every model they did, the M10, M240, M11, and so on, they have made a monochrome. Also, uh, the Q has come as a monochrome, uh, the Q2 monochrome, and you will see other uh, monochrome cameras in the future also, of course. I bet you are a little bit intrigued now. You come this far in the video about a camera from 2009. But there's something about this that makes it really interesting. And I said uh, a key thing in the beginning, if you heard it, is that I have all this camera, I use them all over the world for a lot of stuff. And the latest one, we have the M11, we have the M11 uh, monochrome, and we have the Q3, and we have the SL2, uh, soon we have the SL3. My Conclusion is a camera is a camera. It doesn't really matter if I shoot with like M9 with 18 megapixels or I shoot with the M11 with 60 megapixel. It's a photo and it's so almost ridiculous that when I look through my archive, which I kind of do a lot, I find a photo and it's like, oh, that's a great photo. And sometimes I forgot where I took it and when I took it, it could be Sydney in 2012. It could be London 2016, whatever. Um, I actually can't tell when I look at the picture which camera is it shot with. Uh, typically I can see the lens, but I can't see what is the sensor behind this. And that's a little bit contradictory to, you could say when a new camera comes out, there's the hype like, oh, this is 60 megapixel and this is the most dynamic range. Uh, and it should be something you could see, but the reality of it is that you can't really see it. That's fine. Uh, and what it basically means is that the way I pick uh, a camera for the day, because that's usually what I do in the morning or whatever, I pick a camera on a lens and then I just bring that. I don't bring a handful of cameras, I just one camera, one lens. And you can say if I go out with a 50, I can do 50 millimeter photos and that's what I do. I don't have to think what I'm missing because I don't have a 400 millimeter with me. I don't have to think what could I do if I had 21. I don't have a bag with this, so I don't have to change lenses or anything. I just have my 50. Other days I'll put on a 90 and then I'm doing 90 millimeter photos. And whatever else is like requires a wide angle 28 or 21 millimeters. I just, this is just not my thing. I just, it, I don't even have to look for it. I just have 90. Um, so I think Deep down, I actually think that things could be fun and you should be guided by your passion. That's how you make great things that you're enthusiastic and you're passionate about what you do. And the foundation for it is that you pick a camera or a lens that you actually like, uh, that makes you enthusiastic and make you want to go out and take photographs and look for, for things. Um, and that's where the M9 comes in, that is still a relevant camera. So sensor-wise, image quality-wise and everything, it's up to standard. It's a 2009 camera, but it, you can't really tell in the final picture if it's 2009 or 2024. Same, same picture you're looking at. Uh, in a few cases, you could say in a very few percentage, two or three percent of what most people do, you would actually have pleasure of zooming in or a reason to zoom in on a detail and see how much resolution you have. So that's where you could say 47 megapixel or 60 megapixel comes to right. 
then you might use it. You could also be in a business or type of photograph where you actually want a lot of details in every photograph. But most of us, you could say, if I take a street photograph of a woman or somebody sitting and reading a cafe, it doesn't really matter how detailed it is. I mean, of course, it's fun. You can zoom in and you can read the text in the book the person is reading. But it's not really applicable in real life. Nobody, what are you going to use it for? So that's just entertainment and that's like fascinating, but it doesn't really make a difference. What does make a difference is, do I feel enthusiastic to take out a camera? Enthusiasm, that's where the M9 comes in again and again that us who have used it a lot in the past or have used it in the past, we just don't want to let go of it. We, we, we want to keep this camera, there's something, it has its own soul. Uh, some people have had it, sold it and they regret it, they want to get it back again. And of course, then there is other people again that never had a Leica M9 and now you're looking at this video and I bet that you already opened another window on your computer or your phone to look at eBay and elsewhere to see what is the story of Leica M9, how much is it, and also maybe uh, the Leica M9 monochrome, where can I get one? And it's basically very simple, you could say uh, it's a fully function camera. The lenses that you put on it is the same as you put on uh, if you go buy a brand new the new Leica M. Uh, it's also interesting you can go back to the 1940s and the, and the lenses that you could get back then for Leica, you can put on the Leica M9 with an adapter after lenses after 1954 have M bearing you can put them straight on, the focusing, everything works and it look, actually looks amazing. And very often you could say all lenses have a signature that New lenses can lack, not so much in the M system, but you said new lenses in general is very perfect and almost as if made by the same computer, so they see they tend to be uh, just perfect. And like I have a lot of all the lenses that have flare and have a softer look or less contrast on and this and that and have some interesting sparkle in the out of focus uh, backgrounds and foregrounds. And some of them doesn't cost a lot. Some, if they're collector's items, are really expensive. Uh, so that's maybe not the ones you want to take out on the street. Uh, but anything is basically possible with this. And you could say, uh, buying a second-hand Leica, uh, which it is going to be, because there's not going to be any new in a box anywhere, most likely. Uh, but buy, buying a Leica M9, you could say, the main thing you look for is, of course, does the shutter work and so on and how does the camera look and how does it feel uh, but apart from that you look at the sensor. Uh, the Leica M9 came out with this uh, uh, CCD sensor for, and some of the sensors get corrosion and corrosion is basically there is like there's different layers on the sensors there's some electronic sensors, some glass and then there's some coating and blah blah so the protective coating ironically on the front of the sensor uh, start crackling and what causes it is probably uh, humidity, uh, something in the air and blah blah blah. Uh, so that means that some of them corrode and some doesn't really corrode. Uh, and that builds, you could say, some excitement into <laughs> the whole thing of getting the Leica M9 because you could buy a camera that already started corrode a little bit or maybe it corrode a lot or maybe it never will. Uh, and then there is, uh, uh, Leica of course discovered this at some point and said, okay, we're going to replace the sensors for free. So you will find Leica M9s that have replaced sensor, but it's basically replaced with a new sensor of the same type. Then at some point Leica actually made a new sensor that couldn't corrode and then they replaced uh, those for free for a while and then at some point they said, okay, that's enough. This is not a brand new camera anymore, it's been on the market for a while. Uh, you have to pay, I think it was around $1,000 to buy and get a new sensor put into the camera. And people did and then eventually Leica ran out of sensors and that means that you cannot send the Leica M9 to Leica anymore and get a new sensor because they simply don't have any. What you can do is you can buy a Leica M9 that already have a new corrosion-free sensor. 
You can also, if you buy like a M9 uh, that have a sensor with corrosion, there's different third parties where you can send it to and that will actually replace uh, the front of uh, the sensor. And to my knowledge, it basically works in 99.9% .9 of the cases. I haven't really heard of anyone where they, they fixed it and the camera stopped working or the pictures look different or something. So that is totally possible. There's also the other possibility and that is that you just live with the corrosion. And you can say, uh, I have two M9s. This one have uh, the new uh, sensor that can't corrode. So that's great. Then I have my monochrome here. Uh, this sensor have corrosion. Um, and it's something that whenever I sent this camera to Leica and Wetzlar and asked them to service it, which means uh, adjust the focus and whatever, just take up the camera and make it like new, uh, they will say there's a corrosion on the sensor uh, and we don't have any new sensors, uh, but we will offer you that you get uh, something like $2,000 for your camera uh, if you trade it in and buy a newer model without corrosion. So I can trade in for like M11 or whatever, or Q3 or whatever. And every time I say, don't touch my sensor, I, I'm keeping this camera. And the reason I'm keeping this one is because I can't see the corrosion. It's very possible that when you look, well I know, when you look at the sensor you can see some spots. Uh, when I take pictures, I don't see the spots. If I take a picture and uh, of a, like an even surface and I stop down the lens to f8 or f16 or something, then I can zoom in, I can see some small dots that that's corrosion. It could also be dust, but it's not, it is corrosion. So that is how important or not important corrosion is. Uh, it's basically something that I don't really care about. Uh, some people get really upset about uh, that they bought a camera in 2009 and now uh, they have to spend thousand dollars or something to fix the sensor. Or I mean, I mean, I I've, personally I don't really feel like that. I took a lot of pictures of this and I have other things uh, that I have to repair or they stop working after some years. I mean, just take uh, the iPhone. Uh, you buy an iPhone and you drop it and then. There goes uh, the back side or the front or both sides of, the, of it or the camera uh, because it's made of glass. Stupid design. Uh, nevertheless, we keep buying them and we even buy them with insurance so we can go uh, replace them all the time. So I'm really, I don't really have any hard feelings on this. So you can say if you feel, if you have hard feelings on this, don't get a like an M9. If you're kind of like, yeah, you could buy an uh, old uh, Nikon film camera and then maybe uh, the insulation around the film uh, on the back, you have to replace it because it's 20 years old. It's just what happens with uh, those things. Enough of that, uh, but that is basically what you look for. You could say you buy second hand, you have to use common sense. Uh, if it's too good to be true, it's usually uh, not true. It's uh, something is up, uh, but else you can totally look at a camera, you can feel how does this thing play. Uh, and you can say even one like this that is brassed a lot, uh, which in a way is beautiful, but you could say if you had to buy, if you went to buy a second hand camera and it looked like this, you would probably have second thoughts. Uh, but often you can just use it a little bit, you can feel, no, this, this had a good life, uh, I'm gonna take this camera. So that's basically some test here of getting a Leica M9 second hand. That's about what I had to say about photography and the Leica M9 today. Remember that below the video there is free download, so if you haven't grabbed them yet, then do it now. And till I see you the next time, remember to always wear a camera. And thank you for watching.